In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. And Chaplain's Report... Oop. Help if I turn my camera on. Chaplain's Report today comes from the book of Exodus. And I've been doing a lot of daily Bible reading, and I just recently finished the Pentateuch, which if you know, the Pentateuch ends in Deuteronomy with Moses dying on the other side of Jordan, and then Joshua starting to lead the children of Israel into the Promised Land. And on a personal note, I think that when it comes to things like focus and drive and ambition, in some ways these are all wonderful things. Having somebody with focus and drive and, and knowing where they want to go is something that is incredibly valuable, and it's something that unfortunately I feel like a lot of people in my generation are missing. And women probably understand this better than anybody because the last thing that you want is a man that has no drive, no focus, or no ambition if he's just kind of like, you know, cool with where he is now and doesn't really want to do anything else, that's probably going to be a guy that's not a great husband. And even though I think that this would be true in a woman as well, you definitely don't want a woman that lacks these qualities either. It's something that, especially for men, is incredibly important to us. To have goals to want to aspire to, uh, whether it's you know, in the business world or in your personal life, these are things that tend to make you a better provider for your family. And again, not that that's not important in women as well, it's just emphasized more in men with our role in the family unit. But they can sometimes overshadow the more important things. In other words, we let our ambition drive us to, you know, making decisions that we wouldn't normally make in order to get to where we think we need to be. Sometimes it may be where we actually need to be. Sometimes it may be something that we realize a little down the road it wasn't such a good idea to aspire to whatever it is that we're looking at. But either way, even if we're, we have our ambition set on the right thing, it is very much possible for us to lose sight of the reason that we wanted to go there. And to sort of illustrate this, I wanted to go through this story because... I, Reading the whole Pentateuch and then looking back at where Israel started is sometimes something that is very helpful in gaining some perspective and context. Because if you look at the Exodus and the story of Moses bringing the children of Israel, bringing the new nation out of Egypt, why did he do that? Well, I think if you're looking at the Pentateuch and looking at how it ends and looking at everything that happened between there, you would say, oh, well, the goal is to get to the promised land. That's where they're heading the whole time. They leave Egypt so they can go to the promised land. No. And by the way, this is an answer that I would have given if I hadn't thought about it for a minute. I would have said, why did he bring them out of Egypt? So he could fulfill his promise and take them to the promised land. No, that wasn't it. Granted, that was part of it, but that wasn't the ultimate goal. And that ultimate goal is actually stated in Exodus 7, 15, and 16. Exodus 7, 15, and 16, where Moses writes, and this is, by the way, God talking to Moses and giving Moses his marching orders, Go to Pharaoh in the morning, as he is going out to the water, and station yourself to meet him on the bank of the Nile, and you shall take in your hand the staff that was turned into a serpent. You shall say to him, the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, sent me to you, saying, Let my people go, that they may serve me in the wilderness. But behold, you have not listened until now. Now, this is a verse that is very telling and, and really interesting. The stated goal of taking the children of Israel out of Egypt is not to go to the promised land. God says right there that the reason he's bringing them out is so that they may serve him in the wilderness. Well, now the wilderness isn't the goal. That seems backwards compared to everything else that we've heard 
in not only the book of Exodus, but in the following books, we're supposed to be going to the promised land, the wilderness. That's not where we're going. But did you notice that the physical destination wasn't the goal anyway? The goal was to go out and to serve God. Now, if that's the goal, then everything else just makes sense. Because if the goal is to have his people serve him, does it really matter whether they're serving him in the wilderness or in the promised land? Now, the promised land was important to God, and it was important to the Hebrews. They had been promised that since the days of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That was something that went along with God's promises. But ultimately, that wasn't the goal, and it never was. The goal was for God's people to serve and worship him and to have that special relationship that he had always wanted to have with his children. That was what God wanted. And the children of Israel lost sight of that all the time. In fact, there were several times where they got so focused on being in the promised land and and having the good life that they had been promised that they started ignoring the real purpose that Moses just stated the real reason that they came out of the the slavery in Egypt to begin with. You can look back, for example, at Moses, who himself forgot that for a little while. You remember when he struck the rock instead of speaking to it the way God told him to? See, that was a moment where, for a moment, Moses forgot what his real purpose was. His purpose was not to provide water to the children of Israel, his purpose was to obey God. And obeying God meant speaking to the, wa- or the rock so that they could have water provided to them. The goal was not Moses doing that. It was always up to God. You could look at the rebellion of Korah, where they're saying that we don't like the fact that Aaron and Moses are getting all this prestige, and so what we're going to do is we're going to take it upon ourselves to lead, and we're going to lead people into the promised land ahead of when God told them that they were going to and with different leaders than God told them to. See, they forgot that their goal was not to get to the promised land. Their goal was to serve God and do what he asked them to do. Aaron, at the foot of Mount Sinai, When Moses is up there getting the Ten Commandments, what does he do? He builds them a golden calf in the wilderness instead of serving God the way that he was supposed to. What Aaron did was he just, you know, as part of the journey, had an idol built and they were worshiping that instead of worshiping God. You see, ultimately, you could look at every mishap that happens amongst the people where they disobeyed him and say it was because they forgot that their real purpose was supposed to be to serve God, not to get to the promised land. They were going to the promised land, and it was good that they were headed that way. But ultimately, it wasn't the reason they were there in the first place. And it's funny because you can kind of see this play out in the books following the Pentateuch, Joshua, Judges, And then, of course, further on in Kings and Samuel and uh, a little bit further in the Minor Prophets and the Major Prophets. Why was Israel punished? Because even after they were in the Promised Land, their purpose was still to serve God. And they forgot that, too, after they were already in the Promised Land. See, the reason God wanted them to go to the Promised Land was because it was going to be easier for them to serve Him there. That was the goal. Service was always the reason they were heading to where they were going. And I think in a lot of ways, that's really where Christians are, and sometimes we forget that. Sometimes I think that we as Christians forget that the reason that our goal is heaven, for example, is because ultimately we're supposed to be worshiping God in heaven. I mean, going to heaven's a great thing. And being in God's presence directly is probably going to greatly enhance our ability to worship and serve him. But the reason we're going there is because we ultimately want to serve him and have a relationship with him. The goal is not heaven itself. That's just the place where the goal is. And if we forget that, then we may do what the children of Israel did and think that the place is really the ultimate goal, not what we're going to do once we get there. Never let getting to a destination or getting to where you think you need to be 
blind you from remembering why you wanted to go there in the first place. Because when you do that, that can justify a whole lot of terrible things. That can justify sort of a ends justifies the means mentality. That can cause you to forget who you are and why you're going there. And can cause you to make some mistakes. If we remember that the reason that we're going to heaven is because we want to have communion with him, we want to be with him, and we want to serve him, that's going to solve those problems. Never allow your desire, your ambition, your drive, your focus on the destination cause you to lose sight of the reason you wanted to go there in the first place. Stay the course, friends. My mother always said if you can't say something nice about somebody, then you're probably talking about a leftist. Nah, I kid, but seriously, it would really help me out if you would like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'm sure my mom would appreciate it.